Today, Congress zeroes in on a COVID relief bill that will extend important unemployment benefits and provide a lifeline to small businesses. For real this time, we think. Plus, the SEC charges popular investing app Robinhood with misleading its own customers. And finally, it's that time of year. Wall Street firms pick their favorite stocks for 2021, and we've got three of them. I'm Mackenzie Segalos, and this is CNBC After Hours. The color of the day is green on Wall Street. All three major indices closed at record high levels as stocks continue their stellar comeback from the depths of the coronavirus-induced sell-off in March. And it remains to be remarkable just how much the stock market can ignore. More than 3,600 people died of COVID yesterday, the most since the pandemic began in the U.S. And nearly 900,000 people filed for first-time unemployment claims last week, the most since early September. CNBC's go-to economics reporter Steve Leisman called the jobless claims a, quote, calamity. Americans are getting sick, they're losing their jobs, and they're dying at alarmingly high levels. And Congress, well, they say they're finally going to do something about it. And I know they've been saying that for literally months. But with so many people out of work and certain unemployment benefits set to expire next week, it is now make or break time. CNBC.com politics reporter Jacob Promuk has been following the months long negotiations and he can break down what relief is likely on the way. The stimulus negotiations are inching forward and it does appear to be real this time. There have been starts and stops for about eight months now. Obviously the CARES Act was passed in March and since April, Republicans and Democrats have not been able to agree on how to move forward. It appears the weakening economy, the uh, looming expiration of financial lifelines, the vaccine distribution and the mounting case and death totals across the country have finally forced Congress to compromise. The latest bipartisan proposal is set to cost about $900 billion. And that's significantly lower than the more than $3 trillion bill the House first passed in May. And it's also lower than the more than $2 trillion bill the House passed a few months later. Mitch McConnell and Senate Republicans have been pushing for about $500 billion in new spending. They tried to pass a couple of those bills before the election and they got blocked by Senate Democrats. It will extend the pandemic unemployment assistance program, which will keep 12 million people on unemployment insurance. And it will reinstate a federal unemployment insurance supplement, which is reportedly going to come in at $300 per week. And that's half of the $600 per week that Congress passed as part of the CARES Act, which expired over the summer. Even if Congress can get a bill through before the end of the year, that's going to be too late for too many people. So the $600 per week federal unemployment supplement expired in the summer. And there was new data out this week, a new study that said nearly 8 million people could have fallen into poverty since June. We have more people going to food banks than we've seen in years. We have 12 million people who could lose unemployment benefits the day after Christmas. And people owe back rent. Joe Biden is calling this current congressional bill a down payment. Democrats look like they're going to push for more state and local relief which got pushed out of this bill because Republicans oppose it. Republicans are likely to say they will not pass more state and local relief without liability protections for businesses. And again, they set those two issues aside. Even if Congress can pass something before the end of the year, this infighting and sniping and lack of action has already caused a significant amount of damage to people who lost this assistance earlier this year. Okay, let's get to our sound check. Here's a roundup of the day's biggest action and what the top newsmakers and business leaders had to say on CNBC's airwaves. From a policy standpoint, what we need is continued support for the economy. And I think uh, the Federal Reserve Chairman was pretty clear yesterday, reading between the lines of what he said during the press conference, the Fed has done all that they can do. We now have commitments for 900 million doses of vaccine. We have options to take us up to 3 billion doses of vaccine. And we're looking at J&J &J and AstraZeneca possibly having data early January.
there are more retail investors participating in the market um, than ever before. And we're seeing that. And one thing that we don't regulate um, directly, Andrew, is euphoria. Um, and we're seeing some euphoria here. I think I've heard other guests talk about euphoria. Um, you know, when stocks run away, um, like the ones you mentioned, we do get concerned. It's investment banks writing research, highlighting Bitcoin superiority to gold. You guys have seen prominent investors coming out in support of this asset class. You have corporations adding Bitcoin to their balance sheet as a reserve asset. I mean, th these are not factors at play that, that we've ever really seen before in this asset class. Popular investment app Robinhood has enjoyed massive growth this year as investors like you and me, aka retail investors, flooded the company's platform during unprecedented market volatility from the COVID-19 pandemic. In just the first four months of the year, Robinhood reported a record 3 million new users. The app pioneered commission-free trading, a practice that competitors like Charles Schwab and TD Ameritrade copied. But today, the SEC charged the company with deceiving its customers about how it makes money. It's the second legal action against Robinhood in two days. Just yesterday, Massachusetts regulators filed a complaint accusing the trading app of predatory marketing on inexperienced investors. CNBC's Kate Rooney can explain. Robinhood will pay $65 million to settle with the SEC on two key issues. The first, regulators say Robinhood didn't tell customers the whole story when it came to free trading. From 2015 through 2018, the SEC says Robinhood put misleading statements and had omissions on its website when describing its revenue model, namely payment for order flow, or getting paid to send trades to high frequency firms. Second, failing to get customers the best price on those trades. According to the SEC, Robinhood trades were executed at prices, quote, far inferior to other brokers. That's despite Robinhood saying its execution quality matched or beat competitors. The SEC says in total that cost customers about $34 million. Robinhood is not admitting to or denying the SEC findings, but its chief legal officer, a former SEC commissioner who joined the company in May, says the settlement, quote, relates to historical practices that don't reflect Robinhood today. The startup is on track for an IPO as soon as next year, but sources I'm talking to says the, say the SEC settlement and charges from the state of Massachusetts just yesterday are not likely to slow down Robinhood's momentum. The company has added 3 million accounts and raised more than a billion dollars this year alone. So payment for order flow is now a very common practice on Wall Street, especially as other brokerage firms now don't charge for trades. It's zero commissions across the board. They get money off of high frequency trading firms paying these brokerage firms to send their customer orders to that specific firm. So if it's Citadel, for example, they might pay Robinhood to get one of your trades. It's very standard and it's perfectly legal. The problem from the SEC when it came to Robinhood was not disclosing that and not being as transparent on their website at least and saying, here's exactly how we make money. They say it was misleading. So Robinhood has seen a ton of popularity this year. They've added more than 3 million customer accounts and now have 13 million users on that platform. Sources I'm talking to say the SEC settlement is pretty big. It's nothing to sneeze at $65 million for the company. But in the long term, this likely won't slow down its momentum. The company has seen a ton of popularity. This could be seen as a black eye, but Robinhood, in the eyes of users and clients, is not going away. Okay, time for today's numbers round. 2021 Stock Picking Edition. Now, around this time every year, the big banks and research firms on Wall Street release their top picks for the upcoming trading year. Here are three that were published this morning. We'll start with 249. Morgan Stanley names Microsoft a top pick in the software space with a target price of $249 a share. The stock is trading around $218 right now, so analysts see about 14% upside. Morgan Stanley cites Microsoft's strong position in the cloud computing market as one of the reasons for choosing it as a best pick. Next, 16. Research firm Needham chose Chewy as its top pick for 2021, pointing to an estimate of 16% customer growth next year. The analysts say that Chewy's digital-first model sets it up well to capitalize on a broader shift to digital over the next several years. 
According to Needham, only 27% of the pet product business has moved online, meaning that there are a lot of people who aren't buying food and toys for their pets online yet. And they, well, they're Chewy's future customers. The analysts predict that by 2024, that percentage will grow to 34%. And finally, three. Wall Street firm Evercore named Apple one of its 2021 top picks, and it laid out three specific reasons why. First, the analysts say the iPhone 12 cycle will be a super cycle, meaning that the updated design, combined with the fact that more people than usual are using older iPhone models, the iPhone 12 could spur higher than average growth. Second, Evercore believes Apple can leverage its massive base of people who use its iOS operating system to make more money through avenues like wearables, such as AirPods and Apple Watches, and through services. So things like Apple Music, Apple TV Plus, and its new workout subscription, Fitness Plus. And third, the firm thinks Apple's margins will grow larger next year as complications from the coronavirus pandemic start to subside. Evercore's pick comes as Apple finds itself in a high-profile spat with Facebook over privacy, data, and advertising. Get the latest on that story by going to CNBC.com and downloading the CNBC app. That's it for After Hours. We'll be back here in our home office every Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday, so be sure to catch us then.